the double hanger trusses that, are, that we erected out on Camp Pendleton are the largest pick that's been on Camp Pendleton's history. The trusses are 325 feet long, 12 foot wide, 20 foot tall. The project consisted of demoing the existing hangar that was used for helicopters and building this new hangar for the MV-22 planes. There's actually two hangars for nine aircraft. One of the big challenges is the restricted space that we have from our building to the active airfield, which is 40 feet. So knowing that we had 325 foot long box trusses to erect for the openings of each side of the hangar, we had to plan early in the project. On the day of the first erection, which was the, the first 325 foot section on the west end, we had a, we had a composited the, the checklist which included our swing radius, our traffic control plan, our notifications to all the, the personnel outside of our, our work areas, the military, the tower, the government officials that were involved, all our subcontractors. And we went through the checklist. We had a, a rigging inspection. We had numerous folks from uh, the government out here doing inspections with us. We had our Bell for BD site uh, team out here, the safety group joined us and helped tremendously. Uh, fresh set of eyes, we had a prep talk in the morning, we discussed what could happen, what could go wrong, looked at the wind, all the, any, any unexpected flights coming in during the day. Everything was, was calculated, checked, and double checked. The emergency response plan consisted of inviting the fire and crash rescue team that worked for Camp Pendleton Airfield. They, were, they had their fire suits on. They were sitting outside of the swing race in the crane, which was 150 feet away from us. They were observing the erection with the rest of our team. All the foremans were clued in and on radio contact for in case of an emergency or an incident that we could distribute them to the required points for access and egress of, of emergency vehicles if needed. We had uh, everybody in zones that were keeping anybody that might not know what was going on at bay and uh, it was very well thought out, very planned and we followed through with a checklist. The controlled access zone that we've created up for the erection of the box trusses on both sides of the building consisted of the crane swing radius, it consisted of coordination with the airfield traffic parking, uh, it, con it consisted of coordinating with the tower, which is 100 feet away from us. And uh, it also, we knew we had a lot of eyes on this project at the time. So we created a barrier that uh, was one and a half times the, the swing radius of the crane that went out into the airfield, it barricaded uh, any traffic that was around. So the controlled access zone consisted of an area that was safe outside of the entire crane swing radius. and. If we had a failure, everyone would be clear. As it got closer to the erection date, we had a three and a half inch thick binder that talked about every aspect from the highway escort that came from the El Cajon Fab plant to the entrance at the fuel farm, which is a mile away from the project, and entering on the west side of Camp Pendleton, driving down the towway line out onto the airfield. We all had to go through air vac training uh, to be on the flight line, it required different rules with checkered flags, uh, FOD inspections for uh, debris on tires. We had the government involved in it. We had their train specialist out of Norfolk uh, come in, out of Coronado and, and 32nd Street come in. The team did an outstanding job. You know, on an effort like this, it takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of thought and it takes a lot of open mind in order to cover everything that you can possibly think of that can go wrong and remove any risk that you could possibly think of that will happen.